Isa. In this video, I'll be talking about song translation. Now, what exactly do I mean by that? Basically, translation is taking a text in one language and expressing roughly the same idea in a different language. So, song translation starts with a song in one language and produces a song with roughly the same meaning in a different language. I'd like to make a distinction between song translation in this sense and what you might call song adaptation, where you just write a new set of lyrics for an existing melody. So I wouldn't say that the Elvis hit, It's Now or Never, was a translation of the Neapolitan song, O Sole Mio, in that sense. You could say that they have similar themes, but the meaning of the lyrics is totally different. This kind of song adaptation is interesting in its own way, and it's not always easy to draw a line between this and what I'm calling song translation. Actually, some of the best song translations, in my opinion, are ones that don't always stick close to the literal meaning of the original song. But where can we find examples of song translation that roughly follow the original lyrics? Christmas carols. As you can see from these examples, song translation has a long history. Silent Night was translated into English in 1859. O Come All Ye Faithful in 1841. In some cases, you can even compare the translations line by line. Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, literally means Silent Night, Holy Night. Notice also that the rhythm and rhyme of the song is preserved, which explains some of the literal differences in the text. But I think the most important feature of a song translation is that the lyrics can be sung to the same melody while expressing roughly the same meaning. How about popular music? Are there any examples of song translations that preserve the meaning of the lyrics while still being sung to the same melody? Yes, there are. Here's one song that must have made a big impression on me since I still remember it all these years later. Actually, this was one of my favorite songs at the time. I had a 45 RPM single of it. Then one day I heard it on the radio, except it was in Spanish. I didn't understand most of the words, but the idea that songs can be translated into another language must have been something of a revelation. But there's another source of examples for song translation, and it's a huge one. Disney. Why am I talking about Disney? Well, they actually have a lot of good songs. They're not all good, but when they're good, they can be really good. The main reason I'm talking about Disney now is that they do a lot of translations into many different languages. Just look at this Czech translation of The Bare Necessities from The Jungle Book. You don't need to understand Czech to appreciate how well the text fits the melody. You can just about hear the rhythm of the song just by reading the text aloud. Učit se modros medvědi, tu prosto modros medvědi, a zapomeno trapani is lost. If you know a little French or German or Spanish, you can compare these versions and see how different translators had very different strategies for doing their translations. I actually like the French version a lot, even though it doesn't follow the English text. It sounds great, and it expresses the deeper meaning of the song in its own way. You don't have to be literal to have a good translation. But there's another reason I'm talking about Disney, and it's this. I've translated quite a few Disney songs into my own languages. It all started with this song. Yep, Let It Go from Frozen. This song was a huge phenomenon. It was so popular that Disney put out a double album with just this song in all its translated versions. It even had some popularity among conlangers as a translation exercise. Con Workshop has translations or partial translations of this song in 22 conlangs and two of those are mine. I first started translating Let It Go into Tirolot on January 26, 2014, and worked on it over the next several days. By February 2nd, I had a complete translation. But what did it sound like? I can't sing like Edina Menzel, so I tried using Utau. The results were not that great. Then one day, I came across a YouTube video from Matt Plus BC with Vocaloid Micah singing Let It Go in 25 languages. 
on the same channel, there was a video of Micah singing Bad Apple in Portuguese. I realized that Portuguese has many of the same sounds as Tirlat. So I decided to download a trial copy of the software to see what I can do to test the limits and break through. Sorry about that. What I found is that with a few simple tricks, Micah could produce almost all of the sounds I needed for Tirlat. Here's the same example from before with Micah's voice. La posta no shin risi ma hurro gala. So for the first time I was able to hear my own language in a voice that wasn't mine. This was a big deal and I wanted more. I went on to translate more and more songs. Even with all the advances in Vocaloid software in the last five years, Micah is still one of my favorite voice banks, with all of her extra phonemes and the clarity of her voice. But how does song translation work? You can't just translate word for word. You need to have a good vocabulary to start with, since you'll need to rephrase ideas to get them to fit the rhythm of the song. You need a good understanding of how your language works, all the little tricks that you can use to move words around or fill in gaps. One thing that I found especially useful to have is a rhyme guide, a list of words sorted by rhyme. Here's a simplified example of a rhyme guide in Jarda. As you can see from this list, I've listed the voiced and voiceless final consonants in the same group. This helps me to identify words that might rhyme if a voiced final consonant is devoiced at the end of a phrase, or a voiceless final consonant is followed by a suffix that starts with a voiced sound. Another useful thing to have is a categorized vocabulary guide, more or less like a thesaurus. Instead of keeping my conlang's lexicon in alphabetical order, I like to arrange the words with similar meanings together. If you want an alphabetized list, your word processor can do that for you. If you get stuck on a song translation, this way of organizing your vocabulary makes it easier to find alternative words that might work out better. Let's look at a simple example of how I might go about translating a song, the first two lines of Let It Go in Lindinger. I start with a literal translation. Clearly this can't be sung. It has too many words. I need to decide which words are less important and omit some. Now the first part of the line fits the rhythm, but what can I do with the last part? I have to reword it. It works. Now I'll do the same thing with the second line. First a literal translation. That doesn't have too many syllables, but they don't fit with the pauses in the rhythm. I'll try rearranging it to fit the rhythm. That works, but it doesn't rhyme. Fortunately, the word elmivat rhymes with ndrakat in the first line. So I'll try putting Ermivat at the end of the line, and with a few more adjustments, it works. Here's Micah to demonstrate what it all sounds like. So that's a brief summary of how I go about translating songs in my languages. But the best way to learn about song translation is to try it for yourself. There's not a right or wrong way to translate songs. The rules are whatever you decide, as long as it sounds good. Until next time, vuya! <laughs>